it, it was quite a subtle thing for me because I think I realized over time that looking at myself in the mirror was not a positive experience. Like anytime I saw myself, I was constantly trying to like either like suck my belly in or like just generally try and find an angle where I didn't like, <laughs> I didn't dislike what was in front of me. This thing, this is correct. Isn't it? <laughs> if, if it fails, then fuck. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we're doing it again. Yeah. We did the reactions to the weird videos. That was so much fun. You know, my audience actually love your response. <laughs> <laughs> when I watched the final video, I was like, oh, oh, everyone was a bit more tame than I was. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what happened to your hair? Well, what do you mean what happened to my hair? Why do you guys have, why do you say oh, things about my hair? A bit messy. Hey, not everyone can have wonderful, long, straight hair like yours. It's great. It's, it, whoa, okay. You know what you look like? You look like that Tarsus thing that has like orange hair that's a bit flowy. Well, okay. the, the Lorax or something like that, or the Grinch. Yeah. Dude, I just watched the Grinch for the first time this Christmas. <laughs> Did you? What did you think? I liked it. It was surprisingly good. I think it was my first Christmas because I don't celebrate Christmas. Yeah, that. so I was going to ask, like, because I, I flipping love Christmas. I think Christmas is great. Aside from the, the Jesus part and the Bible narrative, which gives me a lot of joy and a lot of life as the central part of the season, I'm also crazy about Christmas food and just... <laughs> the day the christmas day and how much eating happens <laughs> because i think for me the reason why it's so special mm. is that it's one day where you go to great lengths to 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 prepare and eat really nice food the whole day yeah. it's not like for the whole day you just eat good food and that's what i really love about it i didn't pick out this year though i usually like i usually eat a lot <laughs> A lot to the point where I'm just like lying there in a food you know, like a, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel like food guilt when you eat a lot during Christmas? Never, never have. Which I'm very, which I'm very grateful for, because I can definitely see how it would be. You know, it might also just be because I was a very skinny kid. You're still a very skinny adult. Yeah, I'm still quite a skinny adult. I'm, I mean, I'm less skinny now. I like never really put on weight as a as a child. Like, definitely not from eating food. In the first lockdown, I guess this is what happens when you stop being a teenager and start being an adult. But my body decided that my metabolism doesn't work as fast as it used to. <laughs> and so um, in the first lockdown, I put on a lot of weight because I was like, this was this would have been Easter coursework season. And so I was just sitting down all the time. I was with my family eating a lot of good food, but I put on a lot of weight. Didn't have the discipline to go and do exercise every day. Um, I just meant I put on weight, but like more significantly than I had ever done before. I've always been like a little bit vain in the sense that I'll like check myself out in the mirror and stuff and focus on how my hair looks and stuff. Much to your disbelief, I actually do. <laughs> it, it, it was quite a subtle thing for me because I think I realized over time that looking at myself in the mirror was not a positive experience. Like anytime I saw myself, I was constantly trying to like, either like suck my belly in or like just generally try and find an angle where I didn't like, <laughs> I didn't dislike what was in front of me. Some of my kind of like old friends from, from church when I was a teenager, we started doing kind of like a, a life group thing, basically like a hub um where you meet every week and you just talk about what's actually going on in your life you're kind of vulnerable with them and you pray together read the bible together probably um but you but like primarily you're honest about what's actually happening the process of having those and especially having a group of people who already knew me and who i knew so there was already kind of a, a an establishment of, of trust there basically start to realize that these negative thoughts like were not were were detrimental and were like obviously making me unhappy yeah it was weird and, and they were fantastic and actually well like you said um uh, a few of them remarked how it's not it's pretty rare for guys to talk about even if like a lot of uh, i reckon i reckon probably a lot of guys think about it and have 
kind of somewhere on the scale of uh, body dysmorphic issues. Quite rare that people will talk about it, especially in open terms. I actually like literally put on weight as well as like looked, looked bigger. And it was the first time in my life where I've kind of like not been, Skinny. not been a bit of a twig. Yeah. Would you talk to your friends who might also be male who you don't know if they had this experience, but would you like go to them and talk about it? I, th I think so. I feel very lucky to have some very close uh, male friends who like would talk about this stuff and who I imagine have actually experienced somewhere somewhere in the in the ballpark of this. And the two the two guys I live with, I talk to them about it. But at the time, at the time I was living with my parents, I talked to my parents about it, which was a weird experience. Um, it wasn't bad, but I don't think they immediate they didn't immediately understand that it was a mental health issue because one of the immediate responses was like out of love but like if you want like a way to do exercise or something like that we can we can do some of that stuff together and that'll be fun I'm just like thank you I think you've slightly missed the point here <laughs> did they eventually get the point yes yes they did that's great um and they, and they were very sensitive as well to it which was nice um a generational thing mental health stuff is sometimes you have to bridge the gap we don't talk hugely about stuff like this in my family i think we kind of come from a bit of a stoic tradition important thing was and the thing that that actually was affecting was how i felt about myself not uh, how i felt about my body not necessarily what my body looked like how did you feel about yourself oh i just felt like a big sack of potatoes um, <laughs> you see like people with dad bods and stuff like that and that's kind of like in or it's not in but i like ha i had a bit of a belly and i was just like oh i'm 20 i'm 21 <laughs> i was like oh, i don't like this or i don't want this to be how people see me i was never like uh you'd see like the popular kids in school the popular boys in school all have like six packs and stuff yeah and i would look down i'd be like well i definitely don't have one of those but um <laughs> Uh, was never very athletic, any of that stuff. Didn't really mind that much. I guess everyone wants to have a sick pack. Do you remember Stuart from KXC? I remember him saying to me one day after church, uh, because he knows I have anorexia, and so we were chatting about it. He just said, don't worry about it, because when we get to heaven, God's going to give us new bodies. I'm so excited about my um, spiritual six pack. What a strange thing to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's, the, there's, there's having a like a divine perspective on life and having a perspective that's like okay what really matters here but then again being like oh when we get to heaven and I'm like I don't I'm not comfortable with the concept of heaven at the moment so actually thinking Why? about just it's very conceptually frightening this is slightly the philosopher and me talking but like I uh, what how how am I going to perceive heaven I don't understand how any of it could work <laughs> and no explanation no conceivable explanation is m m very comforting at all it's more scary <laughs> is the lighter just your prop is that oh, sorry. I <laughs> that's okay hey you, you don't mind what? does this stress you out no okay no great. i just thought it was funny <laughs> i am obsessed with fire my flatmates <laughs> is not supportive of my obsession oh. But she's not here. So. <laughs> Interestingly, I think my my relationship with my body is much better, um, though it's slightly harder to track because I am I am a lot fitter than I was maybe six months ago. In in my house in London, we have a pull up bar at the bottom of the stairs, and I just do a lot of that, and it changed the way my body looks, and I liked that to not look at myself so much. That was a good thing. I started just like, you know how in Zoom, I haven't done it today, but you know in Zoom that you can turn off your own yeah, your own one. I just I just did that a lot in calls because I hate the fact that we're, it's just so unnatural, isn't it? If you were in a room with someone else, you wouldn't have a mirror in front of you whilst <laughs> you also talk to them. I try to focus on the things I like about my body rather than things that I don't like. What do you I, like? Um, well, I have some muscles now in various places which is quite nice. Various places, okay. It, well, like here and here, which is quite fun. Sometimes here, but also on my back. Apparently back muscles exist. The ones that are chin up bar uh -huh. does for you. Interestingly, I think doing exercise is better for 
how you feel about yourself rather than actually how healthy your body is. Why do you think it's quite common for women to talk about body image issues nowadays, but it's not that common for guys? I guess the boring answer is that it, it's coming along the, the process of body image and objectification being a thing that is has historically just been a lot more present in women's image and women's bodies because women's bodies have been scrutinized more the whole mental health conversation around body image will start earlier we still we still live in a world that hugely has a lot of prejudices in regards to gendered bodies like the conversation around guys will get there will just be just be a bit lagged and hopefully the, like the female conversation will kind of provide a stable framework for more of the male conversation. And I was grateful for actually a lot of the people, especially the, the women that I talked to about it, obviously kind of essentially already knew, already had the lexicon to kind of engage with that. Whereas some of the guys um, I talked to about it don't. So some of them had a bit here and there, but broadly, like obviously not nearly the same kind of uh knowledge about it or obviously there'll be a bit of like toxic masculinity in there mm. not talking about things we we love to men we love to not talk about things um do you? yeah do i love not talking about things yeah other than toxic masculinity like stuff of stoicness um isn't necessarily gendered is um it's still very prevalent people just don't say what they say what's going on i'm getting better and better all the time at talking about stuff like for example for women it's quite obvious right you look skinny you know to have skinny legs but big boobs and a big butt for some unknown reason like it's yeah. quite, <laughs> quite straightforward yeah, yeah for you what is the thing that you you feel the pressure of well or in the past you feel the pressure of oh i need to look like that what probably still is like the instagram boys and the tiktok boys who are like <laughs> There's like, let's be real, they're all white as well. Um, like they've got they've got a six pack and they're coming in. Yeah. Uh, they're doing all yeah. the faces. Not necessarily specifically like I've gone on Instagram and seen them and be like, whoa, I need to look like that. But it's just kind of like it's one of those things that permeates. Because you're never gonna you're never gonna be as gigantic as Henry Cavill. You're never <laughs> gonna have arms as big as Chris Evans. I'm not really worried about that. Yeah, it's being the right shape as well. It's being like a tortilla as well. Are you repulsed by this conversation? I mean, I'd be repulsed by this conversation. I mean, I don't know, because you said you don't like to talk about things. No, when I said I don't like to talk about things, that's kind of like the, that's the impulse that I work past. It's not like the, I genuinely don't want to talk about things. I find it funny. Obviously, it would be great to chat more. Um, but I find it really funny that this is like that two of the times that we've spoken recently have um, have been kind of in yeah. this format. We don't. We never have the same module. Even if we do have the same module, we're never in the same seminar. Group. I know. What's that about? What's that about? Uh, I like to remember when we first met. I find that really funny. Uh, <laughs> I asked you about first, and you're just confused. <laughs> All the Europeans asking me about, <laughs> and the Taiwanese asking me about Brexit. And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm not nearly clued enough. I'm, I'm like the only English person in the room. You could say anything and we'll, we'll buy into it. So there's nowhere to be wrong. We're not going to- I definitely, I definitely felt some of the Europeans being like, I know more about Brexit than this guy does. <laughs> uh, oh, this term, this term's great. Uh, I'm taking the philosophy of space and time, which is fantastic. Oh, nice. So good. We're basically just doing a bunch of Newtonian physics at the moment, which my kind of not very sciencey brain is like, oh, this is a lot. Um, <laughs> you no, know, because it is more philosophy, so it does make sense. The stuff of science that I don't like is when it's just like, this is how it works, and you're going to accept that. The regulation of intimacy, which okay. is the is like the polit political philosophy of sex, philosophy and ethics of climate change, because dissertation is uh is a ah, double okay. credit yeah are, are you taking any um cool module this year in philosophy of religion and what is the next advanced philosophy of mind who's who's taking religion is it yes oh legend you talk so slowly <laughs> <laughs> you're reading all the papers and you just think gosh religion is just 
<laughs> These people are insane. This is insanity. This is not faith. It's just pure insanity. I just don't see. I just don't see it. I just like I see the God of the Bible, and then I see, and then I see the God of philosophy, and the God of philosophy is like a bunch of attributes. He's yeah. like a bunch of criteria, and I'm like, nowhere in the Bible does it say this. Medieval manuscript, Renaissance Italian cities. Yeah, it's great. That's so cool. I mean, my mom and I have done two, two wine talks, two holidays now, because yeah. it, it's just a fantastic way to spend an afternoon, essentially. <laughs> Do you say your name on your channel? What's the name of your channel? It's named Shi Dong. Shi Dong. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to attempt that. Because <laughs> wait, wait. Are, are you up to try to speak Mandarin? No, not at all. Like, as in, what? part of me, part of me really wants to, part of me really butcher it. Like, I it's will. Okay. It. okay, let's try it. And if you fail, I'll not put it in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yi Qian. San Lian. San Lian. Oh, whew. Whew. Um, Zi Huan Ting. Yi Xuan San Lian. Close, Yi Qian. No, yeah. what? Zi Huan Ting. Yi Jian San Lian. Yes! <laughs> oh no, that was definitely awful. Be kind to yourself, because it's hard. Yeah. I should ask you to tell them to pay me more. <laughs> <laughs> pay them more. You're, you're overlord. <laughs> I mean, I assume you, you've also got like essays left, right and center. Yeah. Did you apply for any self-certified EC? Yeah. Yeah. That's a mistake, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was.